So the awesome photographer, Damien Plisko, is going to show us how he shot this photo after the intro. What is going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm back with another exciting collaboration again with Damien Plesko. Now nothing makes me happier than seeing someone like Damien going up to the next level and killing it. And on top of that, he started sharing the knowledge with other photographers. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description below. All right, so Damien's going to show us how he shot this photo and how to create what they call, I guess, is the prism effect in Photoshop. Now make sure to like this video and share it with your friends. I'll leave you with Damien. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Damien Plisko here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I took this Honda Civic Type R image and turn it into this image here, all using Lightroom and Photoshop. So let's just get started with some of the basic adjustments that we're going to make. First off, I'm just going to adjust the white balance to my liking, which is about 5800. Just gives it a bit of a yellowish tone. Next thing, I'm gonna bring down the highlights so I recover some of the whites in the car to probably about 80. Next thing, I'm gonna bring up the shadows to about 75 to recover some of those details in the shadows. Next thing, I'm gonna bump up the whites just to recover some of that contrast that I've lost by bumping up the shadows and the highlights. So I'm gonna bring up the whites to about 35 and bring out the blacks to about minus 10. Now I'm just gonna turn on the contrast by about 10 just to get some of those details back as well. Next thing, I'm going to bump up the clarity to about 15 give it a lot more contrast as well, and dehaze the image as well. And then I also wanted to make this image uh, very colorful and very vibrant, which is why I bumped up the vibrance and the saturation to about 10 as well. Next up, we're gonna adjust the color settings in this image. Uh, and the first thing that we're gonna do is go over to the saturation tab and bump up the reds. I wanted to do that to accentuate a lot of the color, uh, the, a lot of the red colors in the car itself. And then turn on both the orange and the yellows because that's something that I wanted to eliminate both in the pavement and in the surrounding buildings. So both the yellow and the orange would go down to 50. And I also want to eliminate some of the greens that are on this image as well. So bump it down to about 50 as well. And then Aqua, I believe we brought it down to minus 10 and then blue to about minus 45. And that's the desired look that I was going for. And then in the luminance tab, I wanted to bring up the reds as well to about, I would say 35. Now that we've finished making all the adjustments in Lightroom, we're gonna bring this image over to Photoshop where we're gonna make further adjustments. Uh, so now that we're in Photoshop, uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is clean up all the imperfections in the pavement, get rid of all these yellow lines, and then get rid of this uh, homeless dude that was walking by the car, and I'm gonna replace him with a bit of a hipster kind of guy, uh, but that's later down the road. Um, but first I'm just gonna clean up the pavement and for the sake of the time, uh, I'm just gonna speed this part of the video up for you guys. So now that you can see we finished cloning out all the all the imperfection is, imperfections in the pavement, and then I finished cloning out the, the homeless guy that was walking here. As you can tell, I didn't have to do a perfect job at the cloning, just because we're actually gonna put a different guy in here in the moment. So I didn't actually have to pay too much attention for what was gonna be behind here. So next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this, this guy that I found online, and 
I just basically dragged them into the document and I made them about the same size as the guy that was in there before. Uh, one thing that I have to adjust is this shadow here. Uh, it actually shouldn't be going past his foot. Uh, the other guy was kind of further into the document, into the right side, which is why the shadow was going in so far. But let me just clone that out really quickly. Okay. And then I want to match the guy so he matches the original lighting of the, of the photograph and of the guy that was in there originally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the adjustment uh, layer and I'm going to choose levels. And then I'm going to make these levels a clipping mask on top of this layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the whites down to about here. Let's just say 170. Let's just say 175. And then I'm going to bring the blacks down just a little bit, give it more contrast. And then maybe the whites up just a little tiny bit. And because the sun was coming in from the right hand side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask on top of this levels adjustment layer, go down to this gradient tool, and then just feather it. So it looks like there is more light coming in from where the sun is coming from. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm actually going to adjust this guy. So he's a bit blurry as well. Uh, but as you can tell, uh, I want to match it a little bit better to the original guy that was in the original photograph. And then I can also adjust the shadow a little bit. So his foot, where his foot lands, uh, that's where the shadow meets the, 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 the end of the shoe right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clone tool as well again. I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to bring it out just a little bit, just like that. I am also going to add a bit of motion blur to this dude because he is somewhat moving and um, I don't want to show him like it's he's standing still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter, blur, and then motion blur, and then right from left to right, I'm just going to add about 15 pixels of movement, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe something around 12. I'm just going to hit OK. So next up, we're quickly just going to bring in this uh, Type R logo that I created and drop it into the picture and bring it in and situate it right on the ground. So it looks like it's sitting. It's part of the pavement. So uh, hit enter and then we're going to convert it to a smart object. And then we're going to be able to adjust the perspective on this logo. So we're just going to drag it somewhat like that. I'm just going to do this super quick just to show you guys how it's done. You can right click on this here and then you can choose it to scale. So we're just gonna change the scaling and then go back to perspective, change the perspective a little bit further. And then once you're happy with how the logo is kind of sitting, hit enter. And then we're gonna change the blend mode to overlay. And then what we're going to do is add a layer mask to it. And then with a black, with a brush and the color black, we're going to brush out the logo from on top of the car. So it looks like it's actually part of the environment. So I'm just going to show you guys what, uh, that's how it's done. But this is what the original actually looks like right here. Now that we're finished with the dude, we're going to move on to creating this 3D effect in this image that you saw in all the other images in this set. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the layer with the dude, the levels and the original uh, uh, photo layer, and we're going to merge them together into one layer. Okay, and then we're going to take that layer and then we're going to drag it down into the new layer icon and duplicate it. And then what we're going to do is on the second layer, we're going to double click into it and we're going to go into the channels and we're going to uncheck the red channel and then hit OK. Now with the second layer selected, we're just going to nudge the second layer over 
However many times you guys like, this is all preferential, but um, I was just gonna do it maybe one, two, three times and then down one. Let's not do it too much. As you can see, it's pretty trippy right now, but we're just gonna adjust it. So we're gonna take out certain, uh, we're gonna mask out certain elements of this image so it's not in that 3D effect. So now we're finished moving uh, this image. Uh, we're gonna add a layer mask to it. And then we're gonna start brushing out the elements of this image that we don't want in 3D, which is mainly the car, the ground, and some of the dude. So we're just gonna take the brush, we're gonna have a uh, black fill selected, and on the mask, we're just gonna start drawing out the elements that we don't want in 3D. And again, this is all subjective and this is uh, preferential. This is what I wanted to do. Um, I felt like this kind of effect really matched the uh, the crazy looks of that Civic Type R. So it's just taking the ground and eliminating the 3D effect from that. Leaving it on most of the dude, maybe just taking out some of that effect from his face. And then putting it, switching to a white fill, you can put it, you can, you can actually put that effect back in. So we're just gonna maybe leave it in the windows. <clears throat> I'm not being super careful at the moment just for the sake of the tutorial, but. Let's go back in. There you go, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Next up, I added a couple additional elements to make this image even more unique. Um, I added a couple diagonal lines, which I essentially created in Photoshop. These are basically just some squiggly lines with some blur effects added to them. And then I changed the, uh, the blend mode on these to lighten, and then I reduced the opacity to 50, 58%. And then I, of course, covered up the original license plate. Last but not least, I colorized the image a little bit further by adding some more adjustment layers to it. Starting with a color lookup, I added a bluish tone to the overall image. Then I added the levels adjustment layer to it just to bring up the blacks. And then I neutralized the blues by adjusting the color balance on the overall image. And then finally, I dodged and burned some of the elements in the image just to bring out some of the details in the car. So here we have the final image. I hope you guys like it and I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to give a big thanks to Mo for featuring this video on his uh, YouTube channel. Again, thank you very much and take care. See, I told you this guy went to the next level. Thank you so much, Damien. This video is really awesome. It's packed with information and it's very insightful. All right, YouTube, so we've reached the end of this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel Thumbs up, please, and I'll see you in the next video.